In September 2011, I found out that I'd been accepted for the position of peer reviewer for Transparency International's new index run by their Defence and Security programme. The role proved to be a far greater opportunity than I'd expected. I travelled to Iraq to gather some primary data by conducting interviews. I was often refused and people were understandably reluctant to speak, but once one person shared their views, it was surprising how many others were willing to do so too. From campaigners on the rights of political prisoners to a former Hebrew translator, I collected fascinating stories in four of Iraq's biggest cities. I filmed and took photos at every stage of my journey, which will now be on exhibit at the Arab British Centre next year. The experience also led me to speak at conferences on the subject of corruption in defence, as well as contribute to new and exciting online forum. These great opportunities don't mean that analysing the 76 indicators used to create the index was easy. Before I hadn't considered things like whether personnel received their pay on time as an important indication of malfeasance. But now, I could see the value of this question as part of a bigger picture of establishment corruption. In most cases, I found that the assessments that have been made were already robust and accurate. Where I thought otherwise, I suggested other sources or proposed different evaluation responses altogether. I enjoyed the work so much that after analysing corruption risk in Iraq, I reapplied for peer reviewer and assessor roles in Algeria, Kuwait, Syria, Libya and Saudi Arabia. For each country, new sources had to be found, analysed and verified. The research was difficult, but staff from the Defence and Security Programme were always ready to reply to any query or help with translations and source finding. I hope I've contributed to their efforts to create a tool for understanding corruption risk in defence and security establishments.